Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And for a change we're going to start today with what Mike's been up to because we didn't talk about him at all yesterday but he was around and he was doing stuff and he's been doing what he calls a blind build of the Mark IV material science catalogues. And the reason he calls it a blind build is because we haven't actually researched them yet and that means that we can't, that we don't know how to, we don't know, well if we look, let's have a look in FNEI for um, catalogues, it's the Mark IV material catalogues. You see, we, we've not researched them yet, which means he doesn't know how to make any of these things, or at least the machines don't know how to make any of these things. So if we select one of his machines up here, it it just doesn't know. The uh, the, the materials, material thing it needs to make isn't in there. But he can go in through FNEI and sort of just guess a little bit by going in, well, I say guess, and then just re use this for reference. So, for example, maybe that's the electrical shielding data. So if we look in here, we can see that it's, it's made in an electromagnetics facility, which is what that is. And it takes in plastic bar, iridium, blank data card, and ion stream. So we've got here, we've got plastic bar, blank data card, iridium, and ion stream coming in in these pipes. He's got some output pipes as well, which aren't required for this particular one because there's no fluids on the on the output. Um, and then he's got a, he's got a filter here to take out to get rid of the um, the iridium plate to pass it around to be recycled. So that should should work quite nicely. Um, and he's, he's splitting it to go both ways as well, even better. And then the rest of it is just chucked out, out out down this way. And presumably then this once once he's got we've got the research done, he can set up this splitter to send send the um, the actual electrical shielding data off up this belt while the contaminated scrap will just got disappear down here and eventually be linked into his disposal system, which is I don't know down here somewhere. Um, Oddly, I can't, I can't see a load of belts that will be used for taking away all of these, all of the scrap. Oh, it's even further across. That's why. Yeah, so over here, so that will then be linked all the way over to here in order to go into his disposal system to take that away. Uh, from wherever it is up here. There we go. So blah 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 all the way over to these ones. Now the other thing he's been doing is he's been working on making um, this space scaffolding, which is this. This is the stuff that we build everything on. It looks like everyone says it looks like a bit like a Borg cube. Um, but but he's been making that because he then needs to take that into these machines here in order to make the next tier of that stuff. So let's see if we can work out which one of these that's for. Here we go. So for particle beam shielding data, he needs to bring in space platform plating, which, as I say, is made from um, space platform scaffold plus more steel and an iridium girder. makes it makes it slightly prettier platforming, um, and that you can and you can use that also as as um, as ground tiles in inverted commas up in space. And it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit prettier, but it's quite a bit more expensive, especially as I think we're. I don't think we have an enormous amount of iridium available. I have, I have to admit, I haven't looked, but I think we're not. We don't have it. We don't have an enormous supply of it, and it takes up more steel as well. But for you know, this is this is science, so it's absolutely required. We have to use it there, so we will. And then presumably next time he's going to go in and, and do the the laser shielding data, which is which is basically pretty straightforward. It's a it, it's a material testing back in iridium plate and a data card and and thermofluid, and it's yeah basically the same as a lot of the other ones he's been doing. So I'm not quite sure what makes this one harder. Maybe maybe nothing does. Maybe it's just an extra one to put on uh, to, to sort of pad the numbers out. Ah, and then this one is fun because yes, I remember this one from um, from 0.5 because this one requires you to bring in basically some of everything and then and then combine that all together into an experimental alloy. So that's an interesting one to do be simply be because of the sheer logistics of it. You need it's not particularly it's not enormously expensive. It just requires you to bring in. In fact, it's not. It's, it's really really cheap. It's it's. Uh, less than one metal per data card you get out of it. It's just complicated because it requires you to bring in five different things and feed them all into the machines. So yeah, it's going to be the logistics of bringing these up that makes this, that makes this one the tricky one. He says it's taken a surprising amount of finagling belts. So I imagine that's some, for some of the sort of the the loopbacks and this sort of thing in here and fiddling those sort of things in. And maybe he's realising that he needs more resources up here that he didn't have on the belts before. I'm not sure because he's got he's got steel steel here coming up reasonably happily. Yes, it's hopping underneath there because there's a uh, there's a funny business going on pulling the plastic off here. But it doesn't look it doesn't look that bad. Um, but apparently it did require a, a certain amount of fiddling. So well, I'm happy to take his word on that one that it was it was a little bit fiddly. But he's going to then carry on do the so he's got one. He's got one of the um, the, date, the data cards done here. He's got a second one that's where he's got the ingredients for it. So he's probably slightly less than halfway through tier three material science. So that's so that's some good progress. So uh, well done there. Additionally, on the science front, I've been busy as well. I say I've been busy. I, ha I had a little bit of a look at the uh, at the Astro Three just to make sure everything was happy about it, and it seems things are going really really well. As you can see now, we've got the uh, the catalogs are actually 
pushing all the way back into the area that they're being made. So we've, we've, we've definitely caught up on those Astro 3 catalogs. The science system is faster. Now granted we're doing an energy science at the moment, so we're not using any of the Astro stuff. It'll be interesting to find out later on when we start doing perhaps some of these really advanced researches. Um, like, I don't know, this one. the tele Teleportation, for example, that just uses absolutely everything. Um, oh, except biological. If we can find one that uses absolutely everything, that would be quite exciting um, because it would mean that we'd then put the strain on all of our production facilities. But I'm not sure if, that's such a th if such a thing exists. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this one here. So Deep Space Science Pack 1 requires Tier 4 of all of the other science packs. So it's going to pull through absolutely everything. So researching this one, granted it's only 2,000, um, but it's still going to be... It's going to be interesting just to see everything everything running together and see how, see how well it goes and, and what sort of floods of... Um, of science we get flowing through and where and basically where at, where the entire system breaks down what resources we're short of but yes that means we've we filled up this belt up to here we filled up filled the belt up to up all the way to here and fill this one up to the, the the thousand that it's expecting and then up here presumably we've still got yes we've still got some on the train there's still yeah quite a lot on in fact these these are kept in balance as you would expect um they should be kept more or less exactly in balance because the system over here should use them up at about the same rate i think because making tier 2 science packs requires tier 1 and therefore the tier 1 ca um, catalogs. Making tier 3 requires tier 2 and so the tier 2 catalog. So maybe it stays in balance. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. Because as soon as the train runs out of any one of these, it can shoot off back down to go and get some more. That's why we've got this minus 1 of each in here. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, it is it is now working really well. Very happy with that. But at the moment, as I say, we're doing an energy research. So over here, yes, the, re the, the science labs are running very, very happily. But they're just ploughing through uh, energy, probably presumably energy science packs. Let's have a look. Yes, energy one, in fact. So that's a very, very easy one. So it's just, just going to be, I don't even know which end of this is energy wise. So these ones here. So those we can, these ones on here on the end will be trickling in. And we'll have all of the basic stuff trickling in as well, because that gets used for absolutely everything, which is a little mean, but never mind. Moving away from the science a little bit towards the more miscellaneous type things, Tristan's expanded our solar area up here, so we now have even more solar panels available, generating even more power. We now have a total production capacity of 32 gig gigawatts. 32 gigawatts! Wow! Uh, yeah, that's... That's a lot. Um, oh, it's probably actually only half of that because I've turned on the um, I've, I've turned on cheat mode for the, for the video. So we've got, it's probably only actually 16 gigawatts, but we're still using a th we're still using less than a quarter of it. Now, granted, that's because cheat mode is turned on on Norvis as well. So Norvis is generating a lot of energy from solar panels. But uh, yeah, even in, in even in normal use, let's look back an hour or so. Yeah, sometimes it spikes up to four gigawatts. Uh, being used by the by the elevator or 4.3. Our absolute highest spike seems to have been generating 6 gig 6.3 gigawatts from the solar panels. And as I say, I reckon we have the capacity to produce 16. So yeah, we have quite a bit of headroom. I think we're going to be okay for a while with all of this. But that's great because it means we can just build things out. We can put speed modules in our machines without worrying about the amount of power they're going to be using. We can build up those ludicrous builds you've seen on Norvis where we have a wide area beacon full of speed threes and then all of the machines full of productivity threes. And those use so much electricity but because we have all of this available it doesn't matter it's great we can we can use all of the electricity we like we don't have to worry about it at all it's now i'm, I'm not i'm not going to say it's free it, it's free on in an ongoing way but building up all of this area here did take a fair amount of resource and time and effort and shenaniganry to, to get it all up and running but now it's there we just have the power available which is exactly what we want and it's fantastic on the sort of subject of carrying on and tidying things up and such like, uh, Mark has gone in and he um, he obviously heard my comments in the last video about uh, extending the uh, the filter belt. So this this is the one that was um, previously coming all the way goes going all the way around the outside of the factory, and previously it was coming down here and then sort of kind of going through the middle a bit, and that wasn't great. So uh, because I was producing pollution down here with my aero scaffolding um, production, so. I added in a, uh, the, the belt that comes all the way down here, and since then we've we've had some red circuits available on the bus, and therefore we've managed to actually make all of the uh, all of the uh, air purifiers we needed. And somebody, it wasn't me, I think it was chances are it was, it was Mark because it's, or Tristan because they're the ones who you tend to be efficient about this sort of thing. Uh, dropped in this probably this 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 robot port here, yes. Uh, yeah, it was Mark. Uh, dropped in robot port here, and that allowed us to get fill it, fill in the gaps here, and get this all working properly. Now there does appear to be a problem here, so we we're going to need another uh, another pile on there just to get power out to this one. It's not serious um, because I think there's enough pollution scrubbing over here that we're not going to need to worry about it too much. But still, um, have, have, let's let, let's be neat and tidy about all of this and try and keep things working as well as possible. And so that means we now have this belt, bring them all the way down here. Now, of course, we've since then we've done more expansion, so this area down here isn't covered. However, there's a bit of forest and and green 
green greenery down here that I think is probably going to absorb any pollution that's released by around here because the only thing that's happening around here is trains maneuvering so if we flick over to the pollution view yes there is a little bit of pollution here you can you can see that the trains have been busy in this area they've been they've been leaking out a little bit of pollution but it's not it's not too bad we're not doing anything too disgusting down here so it's so it's mostly okay um, what, what is also very interesting to see is these is these very very straight edges on the um, on the pollution uh, areas because these the just fo just following the, um, the the line of, of the uh, of the filters round. So this this shows how successful the uh, the the, uh, uh, the pollution scrubbing is. Uh, there seems to be an oil field here that is generating pollution that isn't being scrubbed, so that should probably be dealt with. Um, Around here we're fine. There's uh, this bit as I mentioned earlier, but I think that's probably going to be fine. It'll get absorbed by uh, by the by by the by the scenery around here. There's a little bit over here, but we do oh, we do seem to have the the, uh, the 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 massive belt coming around this way. Now I do know that the belt comes all the way up here, across and down again. I do wonder if it'd be better just have it go straight across here. We especially as this area does seem to still be fairly polluted. It's but even in even inside this bit here, which is technically inside the filtration system. But we've only got a rel relatively small number of these uh, purifiers, so I think this should probably be fixed to crop put across there, or maybe if, if if Mark's feeling really build happy, it could come down here and across the bottom here. But I think that's probably not worth it. But I think bringing it across here and putting in a lot more filters would be very very valuable because we do seem to have a bit of pollution leaking out of the bottom here. But in general, our pollution is very, very much under control. So yes, he's not just been fixing those sort of gaps. He's also, and there's a good, there's a good example of it here, um, in places where the um, where the belt was pre the pre belt was previously going straight through here, and then there were I think, and there were and then there was a probably an outpost dropping off some filters that were then being passed round here, round here doing the filtration. He's instead replaced that with just an extension of this belt, which does still need quite a lot more power. Um, being connected to it like that, um, unfortunately. But it's, it's a nice idea, though, um, and and down here as well. So so yeah, this 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 will this then instead of having instead of having the main belt just swooping straight through the middle and ignoring the rest of it, we now have uh, and, and then an outpost working separately. We've pulled in the outposts to be part of the main belt, um, and this is the same sort of thing over here where we've got another we've got another copper mine down here. So uh, no, sorry, oil oil. Um, extraction area down here so we're feeding down all of these all these filters and just this i mean in this this case we, we could cut the belt across here and have it just always going down there but to be honest it it really doesn't matter any any anything like this is absolutely fine it's all being fed off the main belt so we're not doing we're not doing this sort of the outposting system like we have here we're do, we're just having it all fed off the same belt which is a lot which is a lot easier and to be honest when you get to places like this where the where the uh, where we've expanded out to the point that the 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 perimeter belt has met the outposts you might as well just link the two of them together because then there's less work for the outpost train to do. And so there's various places all the way around the edge where he's added in he's, he's added in the, out, the the belts from the outpost and over here as well. There was a there was previously in fact there this one has actually no this one hasn't been removed. So there's still a there's still an outpost here that's uh, generating generating stuff. So this this one could also be cleaned up as well. But you know none of this really matters. The, the system is basically working. We're not letting too much pollution out except a little bit around the bottom there, as I showed you earlier. So I think that's what said. that is fine. Back up in Norbit, I have been making preparations to head back over to Talos, and so I've been loading up the Misfortune. That's this spaceship here. Uh, with all the with all the bits and pieces, I'm, I, I think I'm going to need in order to upgrade over there. And this is this is only partially complete so far. But what what I basically what I've done is I've got an enormous quantity of um, space scaffold. I've got and then I've got all the bits and pieces in here that we needed to put up a, a decent sized solar array that will hopefully be enough to power whatever little, small amount of stuff I put in space and everything on the planet itself. And I've put in a load of um, a space elevator cable. So next time I need to put in the, the ends of the space elevator so we can take those over and deploy and to deploy it there. And also then all the stuff I'm going to need to do some expansion. Because I have noticed over on Talos that whilst we are making a decent amount of um, a decent amount of beryllium flowing down this belt quite happily, and all of the and these guns over here seem to be absolutely satisfied. But this gun, which fires over to Norvis into what I believe is the area where the uh, Aeroframe scaffolds are being made is not able to is not being it's not being provided quickly enough And also we're if we're going to start providing it by spaceship and by or by train We're going to want to have a lot more of it available and, and buffered and so on so I've been I've been looking at this and going well It's it's sort of okay. We're keeping the science basically going But this is a bit slow and I would like to start making low density structures off this as well And it's it's just it's taking all of the input and not really and not really able to keep it isn't really able to keep up So we need to expect improve this a bit so my theory is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to um, 
fly out manually in the misfortune with all the bits and pieces I need to put in more of this production. Now the problem is, the reason the reason it's stopping is because we don't have enough input coming in. So you can see up here that we are nearly out of uh, core fragments, so these have nearly been, all been chewed up into, to, give, to give us the beryl we need to turn into beryllium. And over here, this station is completely empty. We've run out of, of beryl being brought in from the mines. So, the mine here, with the 11 million mine here and the uh, 10 million down here, well they both have well, that one has a train in it at the moment. I don't know where the other train is. Oh, maybe it's probably that one bringing some back. So, we do have a decent flow coming out of them. We are emptying these uh, we're emptying these mines as quickly as we can. There's not, we don't have massive um, amounts stored in here. The problem is the speed of the mines, not the speed of the trains. And so that means we either come out here and we fill all these mines up with productivity, possibly productivity, more likely speed modules, but that would massively increase the amount of electricity we use, hence all the solar up in uh, in orbit of this planet. Or, we go out and we, we get some more of these, um, we, get some, we set up some more mines. Now this is a rather bitery planet, which is why this was a little bit of a pain in the wasp name to set up. But over here, there is a 17 million here that's Ex sort of accessible. There's a 5 million there which is very accessible and therefore we might as well get that one because it's easy. Um, there's a five, another 5 million there that's also fairly accessible so again might as well, we might as well and it's quite, a, it's quite covers quite a lot of area even if there's not a huge amount of barrel in it so it will at least mine quite quickly. That one up there is only 2 million, there's a 6 million up there but that's going to be harder to get to because more biters to get through. So you can see that there's going to be, we're going to need to do some, some expansion here which is why I've done all this radar scanning but in order to do that expansion we're going to need to kill a lot of biters. Now we do have nuclear artillery on this planet, we have over here um, there is a nuclear artillery cannon with uh, 30, 30 rounds left in it plus whatever's in storage over, over here. With another 69 remaining in storage, so we've got a, we've got about a hundred um, nuclear artillery shells we can lob out. And nuclear artillery shells are fantastic against for dealing with uh, dealing with the nests, which is, or the spawners rather. Um, but they're not so good against the worms unless you drop them right on the worms, and they're pathetic against the green biters. So. Exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to do this, I'm not quite sure. And also, it's a little bit of a worry that these biters seem to be very, very close to my um, uh, my defend my uh, umbrella defence over here. They don't seem to mind it, but they are very, very close to it, and that that worries me. Um, so yes, I think the answer is going to be come out here with, with lots and lots more walls, lots of artillery, lots of laser turrets, lots of just just lots of everything, and try and expand the territory out a bit more. At the very least, I need to build a wall across there, across there, and probably across there to. To, hack, to keep this in, in, interior area here safe. Uh, if I'm going to be expanding the um, beryllium processing, then I'm going to need probably a bigger area here, so maybe we'll expand the walls out this way. We can also pick up some of these core mine seams as we're, as we're at it. But the other thing I've noted is that all of these machines over here are currently running on tier 2 modules, and we currently reckon that tier 3 are the cheap ones that are worth just putting in absolutely everything. So, once again, the um, my design here is outdated and needs bringing up to speed, quite literally. So I come out here and, and upgrade all of the, all of the uh, modules in these machines to higher tier ones and just get everything running a bit more productively and a bit more quickly. And we should get a bit more, and then that will allow us to get a bit more coming out. So, if we have a look in here, we can see that uh, moving from tier two modules to tier three will get us uh, from a productivity of boost of plus six percent to plus eight percent. So, in these machines, we'll get we'll go from plus eighteen to plus twenty four, as will these, and these will go from plus thirty to plus forty. Uh, I'll do the maths and work out what, how much of an actual increase that will be overall, but it'll be certainly a bit. And then up here again, we've got we've got the extra increase with the of going from plus twenty three percent. I should say plus twenty four. I'm sure to plus thirty on the um, on, on on the pulverizers as well. So these are all going to make thirty two. Sorry, not not to, uh, thirty to thirty two percent on the pulverizers. So all of these stacking up together will make for quite a significant bump in pro productivity. I think. I should also consider putting productivity modules in these where we're making the pyroflux out of the vulcanite because vulcanites. It's being brought from another planet, so it's you know it's kind of pricey in its in its own way. So that'd be quite nice. But in general, yes, that'll that'll help improve. That'll 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 help us get a bit more out of this. And then if we get some more mines running as well, then we can get some more uh, more of these sort of basic facilities going. The ones that are turning the the barrel into into beryllium, rather than the ones that are turning the core chunks into into beryllium. Once the, the, the and the, the reason that's the first part of the plan 
is because once we've got that up and running, we can then start making all of the spaceship bits. So once we've got a decent supply of beryllium, we can start making uh, the spaceship floors, the spaceship walls, the spaceship doors, the spaceship engines, uh, the boosters, boost, not so, not so much the rocket engines actually, it's ion engines. Actually, that's a holmium thing, but we have some holmium. Um, and so, so you can see you can see how all of this, or most of this, requires quite a lot of beryllium in the form of aeroframe bulkheads. So we'd like to get a lot of this available either in probably down on Norvis so we can build it with product again with productivity modules and uh, just get this being produced at a decent rate and we can start making spaceships on mass and that'll be lovely um, we're not going to be doing the automated spaceships just yet because Mark is um, going to come up with some sort of extremely clever plan for, for it but in the meantime if we can get at least a little bit if, if we can get the beryllium into place so we've got the resources to make the spaceships that would be very nice I imagine the other planets are going to have similar sort of um, things with that with the production rate. Although, although let's let's have a look. Well, we can see over here that yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, in fact, you know what? Let let's check this out in the produ production graphs. That'll be a much better way of looking it up. So from this graph, we can see we've been, over the last ten hours we've been producing beryllium at ninety eight per minute and using it at one hundred and eight per minute. That is obviously not sustainable. It has fallen off quite a bit recently. I'm not sure exactly why. This might be because we're not doing astro science at the moment. It might be because we have enough aeroframe scaffolds. Um, but for whatever reason, we seem to have got to the point where we're not we aren't aren't any using it up as fast as we were at it before. But I have plans to start using more of it. So we definitely this definitely needs to be boosted. If we take a look at the iridium, uh, that's being made at 52 per minute and used at 66 per minute on average. So again, that's potentially that's going, that looks problematic. We're we're going to have uh, have some uh, some issues with that in the future. And there have been some crazy big spikes in this recently. But uh, let's have a look over the last over the last hour. Yeah, we're still using it at about twice the rate rate we're producing it at. So the iridium is going to need to be expanded as well. Taking a look at holmium, we're producing 36 per minute and we're using 53 per minute. So again, potentially going to be a problem in the future. We seem to be churning through it a lot faster than we're making it. Again, that's fallen off recently. That's over the last hour. Over the last 10 hours, it's been 40, 49 and 34. So over the last 10 hours, we've produced more than we've used. But there have been some spikes. I don't, I, it's hard to judge with these numbers. We need to go in and really, we need to go in and look at the buffers and see how they're doing. Uh, so let's do that. Here, nothing is happening. This, this, this uh, warehouse is half full. These ones are all about half full. I'm not sure what the rules are here. Um, you are running when there's less than 5,000 in here. Okay, so this, this this warehouse is essentially being left to fill up from here and be emptied through here, and these ones are an emergency buffer. And at the moment, it's about half full, so... Draw your own conclusions there, but I suspect that means we're... we're certainly at the moment, we're okay. On Njord, it's similar sort of similar sort of answers, although here the buffering is being done on a belt, but the entire system has gone to sleep. So that makes it look like we currently have plenty of holmium. Maybe it is just the beryllium that's a bit stretched, and um, and, that, and that only because I'm trying to make low density structures out of it. We'll have to have, we'll have to have a look into that and, and 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 see. But these all actually seem to be okay. On Big Rid, well, it, there's so much Vita available that even the core mining drills have stopped running. So. Uh, yeah, these all do seem to... Actually, I, I take back what I said about it seeming to be perhaps a little bit short of everything. It looks like the beryllium is the main one that needs need, needs a, a swift kick in the wasp name to get it running a bit quicker. These ones all seem to be okay. So, um, well done to everyone who uh, future-proofed a little bit better than I did. <laughs> Over on Agnea, we have a stockpile of 43,000 in the in the warehouse. That makes me think that this is going pretty well. We've got quite a lot of it available. Yeah, it's not it's not full and completely backed up, but that's because there are so many places around the uh, around the solar system that use the vulcanite. But yeah, I would say this is this is this is this is fine, as they say. Uh, it's got to the point actually where one of the inputs has shut down, so we're now just pulling it in from the core mining. So. Yeah, I'd say that this seems this seems to be absolutely fine. We're producing it as fast as we need to, and we can produce it faster if we if if, if the if the requirement is there. Finally, Snowdrop Snowdrop appears to be okay for cryonite as well. Which, to be honest, I, this actually surprises me a bit. I I thought we were still short of cryonite, but it looks like this one has caught up. So yeah, I, I I think we are in actually a better position than I thought we were. So it's probably going to be fairly sensible for me to go off and concentrate on getting us some more beryllium first, uh, while Mark messes around with getting the spaceships up and running. Tristan does. I don't know, perhaps keeping an eye on uh, on, on Norvis and making sure all the supplies go up there properly. Um, and Ma and uh, Mike can carry on with his material sciences. So, yeah, this, this all seems to be going pretty well. Um, 
we'll have to start, we'll have to go out and start actually looking for problems to solve at this rate. The other thing I was considering went for for my trip trip out to uh, Talos is I'm aware that I'm probably going to end up doing a little bit of combat. So on the one hand, we've got the we've got the energy weapon damage seven going on up here, which is quite nice. That gives gives us a bit more um, oomph. But I'm very aware that my uh, my thruster suit not really made for combat. We've got, I've got a couple of these small portable generators that keep the personal robot port going. I've got a battery to to sort of to, to smooth out the um the the bumps in that, and I've got a, a jetpack for flitting around with. Now I have just upgraded my jetpack. Previously I had I think I had five tier one jetpacks. I've replaced those with one tier three. So I've gone from a thrust of, of, of five times one to a thrust of three. So it's actually a bit of a drop, but I, I was built. I, but it has saved loads of space. So I might make another one of those, and then I'll be much much quicker. However, as part of all of all of that stuff, I also made a power armor Mark III, which is. Um, much much better because mostly because it has an enormous inventory grid. So if we look at if we take a look at this one, we can see it's uh, six by six, which is you know it's not too bad, but it's but it's not also not that great. This one is. Um, 10 by 10 so and it gives me more space in my inventory as well so this is this is this is great it, mean, it means I can put a lot more stuff in there um, however I'm planning to fill this up with these with adapt with some adaptive armors with more jetpacks and with personal laser defenses and that's going to use a lot more power than just the robot port I had in the other one and so that's why I've got this portable nuclear reactor that produces significantly more power but it runs on nuclear fuel and the problem with nuclear fuel is if you keep it in your pockets it will hurt you so um, I've had to make sure it's uh, it's just all Picking it up and sticking it straight in the in the in the reactor here, and just keeping it out of the way. But these do seem to produce absolutely phenomenal amounts of power. So it's going to be a long time before all of the, all of this runs out. So it's probably going to be absolutely fine. The power armor doesn't support um, keeping me alive in space. It doesn't have a life support system in it. So, which is part of the reason I've kept the thruster suit. Um, but it's, as I say, it's going to be much, much better when I get down onto planets and start filling, and, and when I fill it up with all of the exciting things I need in order to keep me safe. Such as, well, we, as I say, I put in the adaptive armor because they, they, the adaptive armors use a lot less power. They're not quite as tough as the um, as, as the energy shields. So as you can see, this has a uh, 500 hit points and regains to almost 250 per second. This one has 200 hit points and regains 10 per second, but it'll still it uses but it uses a lot less power to do so, and it'll keep me alive much more effect uh, reasonably effectively, I think, especially if I have several of them. I've mentioned this before, but I've heard rumours that the um, the shields play, uh, don't work well with jetpacks, whereas the adaptive armors do. I don't know how true that is. If you know f for sure one way or the other, please let me know. So yes, I'm going to make some more of these jetpack threes, which which require each one of these requires uh, two jetpack twos, requires two jetpack ones. So it's an effort to make them basically. Um, then I'm also going to make some um, I don't know, probably some personal submachine laser defenses and some personal sniper laser defenses. And these are going to be getting better because of the laser shooting speed. Uh, oh, laser shooting speed as well, even better um, up there. So we'll get quite a lot more toughness from that. And also, I may, I've made a couple of these big personal batteries that I'll shove in the armor as well. So if we if we have a look in here again, just put everything we can. There we go. We need a little bit more jetpackery in there, and we can now charge up these batteries to get um, all these. When I put the suit on, we can charge up the batteries to to store the power that's going to then get used by the armors and on all the lasers to keep, to, to keep keep it running. I'll probably also make a, um, a, a RoboPort, personal RoboPort Mark II to go in, in my pockets as well, because, you know, having robots is very, very useful. What's this? Oh, Discharge Defense Remote. Interesting. Um, exoskeletons are probably fairly pointless, because I tend to fly everywhere. Um, night Vision might be quite nice. Uh, now that I've got all this space in my armor, it, it's worth considering some of these other things. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll play around with those a bit more in, 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 on the stream. And this brings us on to the uh, the last major part of the video, where I say we've uh, we had um, we, we've, done, we've done some research. So we finished off the worker robot speed eight that I was talking about last time. So this makes the uh, makes the logistics bots and the construction bots move a bit quicker, and hopefully means they can go further between recharges as well. Although I'm not certain whether that's actually true. We've researched superconductive cable, which is it's a component for lots of other things. So on its own, not so exciting, but it's going to allow us to get things like even better personal batteries, better supercomputers, um, another recipe for making nanomaterial cable, which will great for the uh, space elevator cables um, better to better generators better to this that and the other there's lots and lots of things that it unlocks including even even including the tier nine productivity modules apparently oh that's behind deep space yeah but anyway you get you get lots and lots of stuff for this because it's, it's something that's useful and goes into making things we've got energy beaming and now this this is amazing energy beaming allows you to put loads and loads of solar panels in orbit around your sun and then turn all of that energy into re one really concentrated energy beam that you can fire at another one of your another one of your outposts whether it's a planet or a um, or a space station whatever you want uh, and then you can use that with a high temperature turbine uh, sorry high temperature heat exchanger and high temperature turbine to generate 
generate massive quantities of power. Uh, we're looking at gigawatts at a time here. That said, with the uh, space elevators and the ca carrying cable and then just putting solar panels around the uh, in, in orbit, I don't know whether there's much point in having these. Um, we shall see. They might be really good for the further out planets like uh, Snowdrop, but for the, uh, for the further in ones, like certainly Agnea is just going to have solar in its own orbit. Talos, we're going to try solar in the orbit and see how it goes, um, because those are very, very simple. They don't require water. They don't require any... They're, 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 they're just simpler. So, yeah, we shall, we, shall, we shall make decisions later as to whether these are actually going to be worth it or not. We have researched unit capsules for the medium biter and medium spitter. Um, yay. I mean, as I say, I think these allow you to create biters that are on your own side. Uh, they might be useful for clearing out some of the um, some of the pyramids, I suspect. If we get the behemoth versions of these and then just throw a load of behemoth biters in, in it'll go out and just eat all of our enemies. That might be quite useful. It might stop us getting uh, ganked quite so quickly and might, uh, and, allow the, and might allow us to clean the pyramids out a bit more easily. We shall have to see about that. We've developed Productivity Module 6, so these, these give you a productivity bonus of 14% per module, that's a lot, but they are also really expensive to make because you need two biological catalogues, 140 reagents, and then everything that goes into two Productivity Module 5s, which is also a lot. So we'll certainly put them in the, uh, in the science labs, we may put them in a few other machines, we shall see. We've developed Power Armor Mark 3, which is the one I was talking about just now, the one I've just made for myself, the blue one, so good. We've made Energy Shield Mark III, which is the one I haven't got because it will sap enormous amounts of power. Um, but maybe I should consider using it because it does seem to potentially be... It may be better, it may not, I don't know. We'll have to, I'll have to have a good hard think about the power requirements of it. We've researched Immersite weapons, which allow us to now use an input, get, make, get an impulse rifle. I don't know how good that is. It, my, maybe I should make one of those and take it with me and try it out on the, on the Biters of Talos to get a feel for it. And then we've been doing, I mean, it's finished during this video, but it hadn't finished during the stream. Uh, we have we have also also looking at Energy Weapon Damage 7, which simply makes all of your laser weapons that, that bit more powerful. Uh, and it only took 1,500 energy, uh, uh, energy, energy, energy Tier 1, so that's not too bad. And now we're carrying on with Laser Shooting Speed 6. Which I, I don't know how that really works, given that lasers don't really have a shooting speed anymore. They shoot constantly, but I guess we'll find out. And, and then in the future we'll do Breaking Force to make the train slow down quicker and Mining Productivity. Mining Productivity is going to be great. Having lots and lots of these just means you get more out of all of your mines, including the um, including the core mining drills, which is fantastic. I can also happily report that there have been no deaths in the, in the last stream because we've all been off doing completely safe things. I did run out of um, oxygen at one point, but that was because I was just trying out a new suit and trying and, and testing whether it, uh, it worked in, in space, and it turned out it didn't. So that didn't really come, didn't come as much of a surprise, to be honest, but it, was, um, but it was worth trying, you know, for science. So that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll come back on Monday to join us for the stream where we shall be carrying on with all this stuff. I shall be trying to make sure I've got all the stuff I could possibly need in order to head off to Talos and then go over there and see how things go. Um, Tuesday or Thursday will hopefully be a, another video as long as I've managed to finish it in time, which I think I should. I've got a decent amount of time available to me. Um, and Wednesday, well, I shall be doing the XCOM 2 stream. Uh, things went fairly well last week, as I said yesterday. We did get somebody killed in the very first mission, which is very unfortunate. But since then, it's been sort of alright, kind of, mostly. I haven't done anything too stupid yet. <laughs> so come along and, and join those streams. Um, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. And uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.